Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. <laughs> so much for the snowstorm. Oh, I know. I thought I was going to be working from home today because they had predicted like 10 inches in northern Connecticut. And of course, I woke up this morning and there was nothing. <laughs> well, I listened to the local news at night, late at night, and they said, well, they have never aired for 18 years, she said, <laughs> you know, and I have been a uh, weather forecaster for 18 years and I have just made the biggest mistake and she <laughs> wasn't the only one and it just right. went south. <laughs> right, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's still some areas uh, are affected like Cape. They're still expecting three, four more inches. So Right, right. Yeah. So, and I think Central Mass actually probably got quite a bit too, like between Worcester and the Cape. That looks like that southern part of uh, yeah. And uh, New York, I think, is getting quite a bit too. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'm glad at least we didn't get much. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah. And all the kids are at home enjoying the snow day with no hardly any snow. I know. Yeah, My that God. I think is difficult. Yeah, yeah. Before, they didn't use to announce closings until the day, early mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I understand they want to make it convenient for people so at least they can sleep in late. <laughs> but Yeah. Myra, you're here, but you're muted. Am I unmuted now? You no, are. Un here. We can hear you, but we don't see you. Yeah, your camera is off. Um, my jaws is gone too. This has happened to me before. Mm. You can't see me, but I did turn the video on. Mm. And the jaws is gone. Let's see. Oops. Don't worry about me. I might disappear and come back. Okay. Uh, or I'll just stay invisible because <laughs> I can hear you. And if I leave, I don't know what's going to happen to me. <laughs> Maybe I'm just going to stay invisible. Is that all right? That's perfectly yes. all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm having... I, the jaws is supposed to go through my earphone. I have called about this a bunch of times. And they told me what to do. And every time I do it, Jaws disappears. And I, I'm, i they're smarter than I am. I don't get it. They changed the way it works. It used to work differently. Mm. And since they changed it, I can't figure it out. Mm. But anyway, so today is a, a dud of a snowstorm. I suppose that's good for you because you have to, oh, no, you're not, Pamela, you're not. I'm Here. I'm yeah. I'm actually in uh, Amherst because it was such a dud, dud of a snowstorm. <laughs> I was like, I don't really have an excuse to work from home today. Oh so. no, I'm sorry. <laughs> where Where do you live, Pamela? In Enfield, Connecticut. So yeah. Oh, so you got more snow there? Yeah, so we, they have more snow. Yeah, we do have more snow, but I mean, they had predicted like. 10 inches mm -hmm. when I woke this morning um it was just wet roads um mm. and by the time I left to head for Amherst maybe just an inch of light snow so I'm expecting maybe um you know some you know the ground will be covered and the roads will be wet on the uh but I actually uh I guess it was snowing lightly but by the time I got out to Holyoke there was absolutely nothing but dry pavement yeah. And the oddest thing, so uh, snow plows on 91 North, uh, putting down salt, which is good, but absolutely like dry pavement. No reason. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. hilarious. Yeah. Because my they, daughter, yeah. I was just going to say, my daughter just texted, it's a snow day. And her sixth grader said, oh, no, no snow. Do we have to go to school late? <laughs> <laughs> I missed the joke. Elise is here. Oh, good. good oh, I, All right. I just said my uh, sixth grader grandchild uh, said this morning about an hour ago, oh, no, there's no snow. Do we have to go to school late? 
It's like, they have a snow day and there's no snow. We had a number of those the last two years I was working. But if you went up the hill into Pelham, what we had as rain, they mm -hmm. had a snow. So they could have six to eight inches of snow. We could have nothing. Right. That's it's happening just, now. My daughter lives in Shutesbury and she said, how are you doing? She mm -hmm. said, we have no snow <laughs> in Shutesbury. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's the, well, they said the further north, the less yeah. snow, but yeah, it's I think the sad thing is uh, in New York, where they have that really important replace George Santos election today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. have so much snow. I think they have a lot of snow and I don't know if people are going to be able to get out and vote unless they went really early. Mm -hmm. They were saying this morning that many people have already voted I uh, hope by so. mail. You know, I hope so, so maybe, yeah, let's, I hope so. Who knows? That yeah. District. So there's three of us currently. I know Marty cannot be here. So there's and four. I, I've oh, just this, joined Myra. Yeah. Oh, you're here. Cool. This is Ian. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So we have four. Yeah. I'm invisible, Ian, because I can't make my speech work and I can't turn on my camera because I can't make the speech work and I can't find the right place to do it. <laughs> I'm here, but I'm invisible. It's sort of fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Anyway, so we could start because we have a quorum. Yes. Right. Yeah. I did um, not hear from Cody or from um, uh, James, al although he asked if we were going to be uh, open today. And I said that typically the town does not close. So I suspect that he might join us, but I did not hear um, that he would not be joining. And Marty was the only person who said that she would be unavailable. But I can um, start by reading the uh, intro and perhaps they'll join us later on. Thank you. Okay. So the uh, Disability Access Advisory Committee is meeting virtually uh, today on Tuesday, February 13th, 2024. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And the time is now, by my watch, 11.32. Excellent dramatic reading. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so because I have no speech um, on my computer, I don't remember the order. Does anyone have any announcements? Oh, well, we have to do a roll call first. Oh, right. We have to do the roll call. Okay, so uh, Myra Ross, I'm here. I believe we have Sarah and Darren. Yes. They, oh, we have Ian Rodewalt. Ah, uh, yes, present. And we have Elise Link. Here. And do we have James Coudinier? No. Do we no. have Cody Rooney? No. And I know that Marty Smith cannot be present. So currently we have four, which is a quorum of the DAAC. Yes. But does anyone have an have any announcements? Okay. Um, I oh, okay. go ahead, Ian, and then I'll follow you. I do have yeah, an announcement. I have one, I have one too. Okay. I, ahead, I don't have an announcement, but I have a an item that I was hoping to add on to the agenda. Okay. Um if, if there's time for it. Uh there is before next I think before next uh Amherst Town Council a uh ceasefire resolution. Um and I was wondering if the DAAC would be interested in in uh uh, lending support to that from a disability uh, perspective. That's a really good question. And I, uh, I, can, we I can, can say more to that at, if we do add on it, it onto the agenda. Yeah. We can put it onto the agenda. Yes. Okay. Um, for, for under, I guess, new, well, things within 24 hours. 48 right. hours How about yeah. there okay mm -hmm. okay all right uh i have an announcement which is sad um the reason marty isn't here is that her husband passed away last week 
Oh. Um, and he was ill for a long time, but nevertheless, they were That's married hard. 45 years. And um, so she's not here because she's dealing with some things that have to do with, um, you know, with, um, with yeah. the fact that he passed on. The saddest part for us is that Marty is going to move from Amherst in the summer. He's decided to move um, to live near her daughter and her grandchildren. And so she has requested that we find a replacement for her um, on the committee. And it's very sad because quite frankly, there isn't any replacement for her. Um, uh, and so I guess um, I think she has to write a letter. I think, Pamela, you informed her of that, right? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she'll have to give notice. But as of July 1st, we're going to need another member again. And I told uh, Pat DeAngelis about this and that um, that she should keep in mind to uh, once we have some applications to uh try to get Paul to fill the vacancy before he filled the last two, which was eight months or or more. So I'm hopeful that we can find someone. Does anyone know a retired architect? Because quite frankly, her presence as an architect was incredibly valuable to us or is still incredibly valuable to us. But if you know any retired architect, it would be really great if we could get one i think anyway or if you know anybody else um who would be able to you know lend a lot to the committee that would be really good anyway um it's very sad yeah so um number two, the the uh the uh, next oh pamela so, you have yes so yeah. my announcement is that uh asa is no longer working for the uh DEI department and the Crest department. So his um, oh, no. uh, internship with us has come to an end. Oh. Um, so. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Where did he go somewhere else? So, um, yeah, he's no longer with us here. So I think that okay. the situation, that's... you know, okay. that's, I have, just have to leave it at that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm sorry, because you right now could use a little assistance. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so the agenda. Um, there's nothing that I recall under old business. I mean, new business. So I but, actually did. Oh, I'm sorry. I, oh, I you put, did, oh, you I did put, put some things there. Okay. I put um, three items under new business. The okay. posting of the DAAC minutes era. Uh, the oh, yeah. What happened with that? Okay. Um, so I received an email from Maureen, um, no, yeah, no, I'm sorry, from Jennifer Mullins, um, uh, inquiring about the approved minutes for the DAAC. And my response to her was that they should be up to date except for the last meeting. Um, and she went to look for them and found that there had been no minutes posted from 2021 until Ooh. present. <laughs> so, oh, really? so I'm not sure I, um, what happened to the minutes that Maureen posted. I suspect that she and I were doing things um, similarly and they were not, the, the, the town has two systems for the postings of uh, public meetings and archiving and they don't speak well to each other um, which is a real tragedy. So if you mm. went to one section of the town website, you know, all the recordings are there, our, the agenda packs are there, but, they're, um, but the minutes were there. So IT has worked with me and all of the minutes that I um, have from my tenure are now posted uh, and in the correct uh, space. I'll have to reach out to Maureen to see if we can track down the, the minutes between 2021 and the time which I took over tenure of the, um, you know, of the board, but as the board liaison, they're, they're, they're not posted. So, so it, this could be where we might be able to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Did, did anyone 
Uh, I have some of them, I suspect. Does anyone have any of the old minutes? Does anyone keep all of that? I might. I might. Uh -huh. Yeah. I okay. might. So sure. what we when is the first date that you need? So the first date would be January of of twenty twenty one. Um, oh, she probably would be June of uh, July first of twenty twenty one. But I will go back into the system and I will send out the specific dates and I'll just do it um, as an email to the entire board and you can send them to me and then IT okay. can help me to um, to pro you know to upload the minutes. But yeah. Some so, of what we have might be draft mm -hmm. um, instead of approved. You know what I mean? Yeah. It might have mm -hmm. been. Um, but I think if we all can see what we have. Yeah, and we'll go if, back and look. In this case, I think we should write, we should all send to everyone because there's no reason for Elise to come up with all of hers somebody else has already sent them in, right? right? So in this case, we can do a reply all so we can all see what Pamela has received, okay? Oh, I mean, boy. that seems fair to me, right? I didn't that mean to pick on you, Elise, but I'm just saying, you know, well, why would you go to the trouble if you found something that somebody already sent in? Because it's just very hard for me to like, you know, skim like dates and stuff that other oh, okay. people have it, that's okay. very hard for me that's a lot of extra work um i'd rather okay. just send in what i what i find but okay. i can send it to everybody if you want okay I can do all that. right pamela how do you want us to do it so just send I, it to you yeah so i think i'll just make a general ask of everyone and yeah. um <laughs> and i'll reach out to uh to uh tori as well because she might have some because oh, sure. um, she was on the board during that time. And yeah. then it, everyone can send them to me and I can sort through them because what I'll do is I'll create a file. Oh, so here's uh, James uh, joining us. I'll create a file oh, and then and store those those minutes okay. there. All right. Okay, perfect. And All I right. found that uh, in my folder, I have everything saved there. But I remember Maureen didn't... Uh, was not really prompt on submitting monthly minutes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she would just hold on to them and then, I mean, or behind, behind doing that. And then uh, she would send them all at once. Mm -hmm. So I'll see what I have. But okay. I might okay. have some information here. And okay. I'll look into this after we're done with our meeting. Oh, thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. No, this is great. I think we'll be able to get what, get you what you need, even if it's not in perfect fashion. I think mm -hmm. it'll be good. Yeah. James, if you're looking at the picture, or Jim, if you're looking yeah. at the picture, I'm invisible, but I'm here because I can't get my speech to work, so I can't turn my video on. <laughs> Just telling you, because you're talking to a ghost, but I'm actually here. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So that one we can clear up for you, Pamela. Oh, that's okay. great. So okay. <laughs> so I, I have two other items under um, non um, under new business. Um, okay. the, so the second one, and I think you might want to address this, is the non-voting counselor liaison. I oh, have some yeah. notes, but if you want to address it, that's um, that's fine. Okay. So the town council um, sent out Lynn Griesemer sent out something three weeks ago. Uh, asking for uh, chairs of boards if the board would like to continue to have a town council li liaison or if the board would like to have one for the first time so she sent it to all town boards and committees and uh they can they are supposed to write back by friday and tell her whether they would like to have continued or whether they would like to have a liaison so i didn't even think about it i wrote yes and I sent it back and then I thought, Pamela thought maybe we needed to get a vote of the committee for that. So um, Pat, Pat DeAngelis has been our liaison. Um, she doesn't come to all the meetings. She's not required to. Um, she is supposed to be somebody that we can communicate with when we need to get information to the town council, which we have. 
Um, and she's been very supportive of us. And it's not up to us to decide who our liaison would be anyway. So all we have to do is tell them whether we want to continue to have one or not. So I guess I want to know what people think. Hmm. This is Ian. Uh, I would be in support of continuing to have one. Okay. So would Elise. Okay. Darren? Yeah. I'm What's thinking, it? I know they're so busy, but I wonder if rather than have them attend every meeting, should they be our contact person? Well, that's what they are. They don't have to attend every meeting. It says that in the thing from Lynn. Um, it I says see. that they're not required to attend every meeting, but it is pretty much a contact person. And I'll explain why that's actually relevant to us when we get to another item. Um, but um, so she it's a we can do it exactly however whoever the liaison is because we don't have a, uh, any input into that um you know they'll they'll be our contact person that's exactly what it is nice. and they'll come to as many meetings as they can mm -hmm. so how do you feel about it yes okay jim do you have an opinion i think you're muted mm -hmm. uh -huh. I, I'm new okay. here. Um, so, I mean, you're saying she's been supportive and not obstructive in any particular way or anything like that. So it's useful for us. Oh, not remotely obstructive. Um, I would say supportive in every way that she could be. And she's very available. So if we want to talk to her, um, I've I've had lunch with her a year ago and I... Marty and I met with her recently about an item that'll come up um, tonight, today. But she's, I think it's, there's no downside to having a liaison. I don't, I don't see one anyway. Okay, then I'm fine with it. And okay. uh, uh, Cody uh, just joined us a minute oh, ago. Yay. Oh, okay. Hi, Cody. I'm just, I'm going to tell you this. I'm invisible because I can't make my speech go on because I can't hear my computer right now. Um, but so I don't know how to turn on my picture, but I'm here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Cody, we're asking whether you want to have a continued uh, liaison, continue to have a liaison from the town council. Um, I would be in support of that. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so we can... Unless you have more information than I do, Pamela, we can move to the next. So the last item that I have under um, new business is just approval of the minutes that I sent out. So. Um, okay. There were mis. Uh, I got minutes for January nine. The regular meeting. What you yeah. don't have yet is the uh, minutes for the special meeting with Amherst College. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So does anybody, I, I need a motion about approving minutes for January 9th. Okay, I'll, Elise will move for approval of the minutes. Okay, we need a second. I'll second. Okay, any corrections or additions to the minute? Yeah. No, okay. Uh, all in favor of approving minutes from January 9th. I guess we need a roll call. No, we'll say uh, all say aye. Aye. All, all, all opposed. All abstentions. Uh, I'll abs this is Ian. I'll abstain because I wasn't at that meeting. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, if we do it that way, we don't need to roll call for everything. Okay. Um, all right. So we have to go to old business. And the old business, um, which is the first one that you listed, Pamela? So the first thing that I listed is town hall accessibility. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. So just to keep everybody on the same page here, last month we had a discussion which had no end because we figured out that the, the, uh, there was no variance ever reported to a variance request, a variance application request ever reported to us for the lack of accessibility of the town hall steps. 
And so we, Marty wrote a letter to Chris that Grestrup, and she said that Rob, um, the ins- I think the head planner or the inspector, inspector. I'm not sure. Yeah, the inspector, inspector mm-hmm. had um, had uh, written a variance, and so we told that to Pamela. There's much more to the story, but this part of it is that we told that to Pamela, and she wrote to Rob a couple weeks ago. And the last I heard less than a week ago, Rob had not responded. Has he by now? He has not. So I've actually made two requests on the last one included a um, uh, a copy to Dave Zomack asking, and I have not received a response. Okay. So the issue here is sort of complicated because according to the uh, MAB, M-A-A-B, anyone who applies for a variance in any municipality is required to send a copy of the variance request to the the um, disability uh, committee or whatever it's called in any town and to, I forget what they call Stavros officially, but any kind of a place like that. That, um, that has anything to do with any town, they are both supposed to receive a copy of any variance request application. We did not. Apparently, there was an application filed in March, and it was approved in March by the MAAB without our knowledge. And the fact that Maybe I'm drawing inferences I shouldn't, but the fact that we have received no response in when we requested this application uh, and response makes me a little bit wary of what's really going on because we should have received the application in the first place. And after two requests, we haven't received the application in this I don't know what else you know about it, but I, uh, Pamela, but I know Marty and Pat and I met um, about this. And that's how we, um, Pat was supposed to, well, I guess we're waiting to hear from Rob. And this is not good because the town hall steps are not accessible. We were not given an opportunity to object. Right. So what what do you know, Pamela, that we don't know? The only thing that I know um, was that uh, Pat DeAngelis was scheduled to have a meeting with the town manager. I, I think it was a, to address this issue and um, one other. And um, for circumstances I'm not fully aware of, the meeting had to be postponed. But other than that, I have no other knowledge. And, um, you know, I... Uh, we'll continue to request uh, the information from um, from Dave and um, from Dave Zomek and Rob Moore, but they haven't responded to my to my request thus far. Uh, Anybody have any procedural ideas about what we might do from this point? Because it really doesn't take very long for somebody to send an application that they already filed and the response to it over to Pamela. I would think perhaps it's a 10 minute chore if you're disorganized. If you're real organized, it's a two minute chore. And for some reason, it hasn't been done. And I, if Marty were here, she would be pushing this very hard, I think, for us to take additional steps. And I don't know what those actually could be, but I have some ideas. Does anyone else? Well, I mean, I am pretty upset about the whole thing. They're ignoring their their duties in a way, the, what is set with the regulations. So what I kind of think I would prefer to do is write a letter to the town manager and include Zymec there and this guy who didn't respond and also write a letter to the um, state office that makes the regulations that they should not accept any variance unless they hear from the board of the disability community in that town. 
So because uh, if the uh, if the application, the copy is sent to the independent living center, first of all, not all towns have independent living centers. We're lucky to have one in Amherst, but sometimes, you know, it just gets, they just file it and they don't think that the town needs to be made aware of that. I mean, the town council. So in a way there is some kind of a link that is lost in the middle. So I think, you know, to address this and I would, that's what I would like to do. Okay, and may I make a point? Yeah. This, Wait, this is who, Tim. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, I guess my concern is access to town hall. And I would hate to see us get involved in a fairly lengthy um, discussion with people where they probably end up saying, geez, we're really sorry, it was an oversight. But we still won't have an accessible town hall. I think this can provide us with some ammunition that the town continues to neglect access and really push that. But I would prefer to see us develop a strategy in terms of what are we going to do to make town hall more accessible? Because otherwise, I just don't see this as really being fruitful. I, I'm not saying it isn't important. I'm not saying they shouldn't have included us in the deliberations. Of course, they should have. But the reality mm -hmm. is that's done. They're working on their damn steps. Um, and so what are we going to do to make town hall accessible? Mm -hmm. I guess some people think that the steps, if they had a lift on them, could have been made accessible. I don't know anything about that. And neither. I, you mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, it's just nothing, nothing I have any expertise on. Um, and we can't change the topography of the sidewalk on the side. The only thing we could do is work on the back entrance. Right. Uh, that's the only thing that could be done. Right. Um, that's not exactly what the law says we're supposed to do, especially 30 years after the ADA, when they've done two projects to make, uh, you know, that have to do with entrances and neither one of them is accessible. And so you've got, you know, you have the service entrance again, right? Which is exactly what the ADA was trying to prevent. So, I, I Jay, Jim, I hear what you're saying. Um, what are other, what are in, Elise, what do you think, Cody? I don't know, I see all sides of it. No pun intended. Um, yeah, I don't know at this point. I don't think we have any argument to make because they will, they will say, well, we already got a variance for that. Yeah. So there's really nothing much we can do. And also we have, we provide uh, accessible entrance through the main uh, street. So they will wash their hands off, I think. I don't know. Pamela, do you have any advice for us? If so this is, I'm I, just gonna I, I, say, I, this is a civil <laughs> rights law. Yeah. I, ignoring I, it really right. rubs me the wrong way. Right. So I, I do I do have some advice. It uh it places me in a difficult position, but I think right. that um one of your um strongest positions might be to reach out to the Mass Office of Disability and to ask them to review the current options for accessibility to town hall. So um I'm forgetting our contact that's there oh, um, jeff. but yeah jeff, jeff right so he, i mean one of the things one of the services that they do provide because he came out for another issue is to come and look at specific locations and provide um advice about whether uh, a location meets the regulations and um so that i think that would provide you with a uh, very good strong argument for um, for moving the town forward. I, I agree with you that I do believe it's a civil rights uh, violation. Um, and I think that it's uh, 
as you as you've pointed out, it is noticeable that we've made two requests and the information has not been provided. That um, right. that doesn't seem appropriate and um, to me. But I I think co contacting Jeff Dugan would mm -hmm. give you um, the ability to have someone who is you know. Uh, in theory, a neutral party and um, who has expertise in, in this area and giving uh, an opinion about the current status of accessibility of town hall. And uh, so that might be a course of action. Good idea. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. I can write to Jeff Dugan. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I can ask him if he would be willing to come and do a site visit that would give us some suggestions and i do you think i should in that letter tell him that there have been two construction projects neither of which has resulted in an accessible entrance uh, I tell yeah him that yeah I, okay yeah i, I think okay. providing him with all the information he's also a member of the maab he uh, so he would have access to sit um, to review those filings, um, or I am assuming that as a member, he would have access to the information that was filed. So I think providing him all the information um, is, I think that's my best advice for how I would proceed. Hmm. And if you think he's on, do, do you so, think everyone on that board hears all the cases or is it sort of like the district, you know, like the appeals court and they're only send three of them and you know what I mean? I think that that the board um, hears um, most of the cases. The only time that I, uh, the the last is incident that I was involved with Jeff Dugan, he came out and did a site visit. He knew that there was going to be um, a variance application coming up on the issue that he saw, and and he was going to notify the board when it came up that he had done the site visit. So I don't. I think he probably recused himself from voting. But, um, you know, was there and able to provide information about what he had, had, you know, seen on the site visit. So I think that he attends, you know, all of them, but I'm, of course, not 100% sure, but I think he's the best course of action. Okay. Of course, and another thing we could do is ask them if they could send us a copy mm -hmm. of the yeah. variance application and their decision, since we haven't been able to get it. I mean, that's playing a little bit, it's playing hardball a little bit, but that's not on us. That's on the people who aren't sending us the application. That's right. And I'm very curious yes. to see what kind of, uh, what kind of wording they use to ask for the variance. Was it like too expensive or there was no solution or what? Well, that's what you we know? don't know. Yeah. We don't know that. Okay, well, okay, we can leave this one and I will write to Jeff Dugan. That's a great suggestion. Thank you, Pamela. Great suggestion. Okay, um, and um, uh, next item. So the next item on the agenda uh, is information about the Hickory Ridge grant and that is the grant application <laughs> That start that alerted us that there had been a problem with um, the minutes from the DAC. So um, all that I know is that the application was submitted on February first, but I haven't followed up with Jennifer or anyone else, um, and I think it's probably too soon. But their their deadline deadline for submitting the application was February 1st and it was submitted. I do believe that um, Ian's information was included in that application. Oh, perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Ian, for sending us uh, the letter that you wrote. That was good. Was, oh, we I, got, just, yeah, I was just double checking my inbox and, and I sent that on January 31st. So mm -hmm. hopefully it did get in there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because um, we got zero notice about this grant. Um, I think the first we were contacted might have been January 31st. Um, so thank you for you know, for stepping up so quickly. Um, and that was great. So we'll see what happens with the grant that they applied for. But it was sort of messy because, well, it was messy. They weren't happy that they couldn't get the minutes. Right. And uh, and uh, 
Pamela very nicely let them know <laughs> that it had <laughs> nothing to do with her. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, anyway. I take responsibility for, you know, my own errors, but since the errors were back to 2021, there was something else that was larger going on. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. The next one is becoming a commission. Oh, yeah. Um, I sent that uh, memo. You received it, correct, Pamela? Yes. Mm -hmm. They did receive okay. it. I sent it to Lynn, Paul, and Pamela, and Pat. And I have received no response. So, so I, oh, you, you know something about this? I, okay. I do know something about it. So it seems that the uh, one of the key uh, people that we omitted from that um, uh, em email or from the memo, and I was not aware until recently, was uh, Athena O'Keefe, who is the clerk for the town council. And ah, so okay. she um, asked that I forward the memo onto her, which I did. And then she responded with some additional information. Uh, and I can um, I, I can take some time and sort of give you a summary. She sent me the uh, process for for the town council to undergo that the town council would undergo to make the um, commission um or to make the committee a commission. And then she has set up a date for some of the municipal staff who would be involved to meet. And so we're scheduled to meet on February uh, 26 to start this process. And, um, and so I'm gonna skim over her email, um, but basically she said that the council's governance ordinance and legislative committee would need to send um, a recommendation of list to the town council for action. So they would they would rev review, make a list that says we're recommending that the town council take action on changing the comp the nature of the board, and the council will first need to approve what you knew knew um, chapter forty um, section eight j, um, and she thinks that you know um, that Pat DeAngelis would be willing to sponsor that. Um, provision. Um, and then let me follow up uh, with that. Um, she thinks that the uh, town manager would likely dissolve the DAAC before establishing the committee and appointing members. And then she just noted that um, the matrimonial law chapter 40, section 8G has very specific requirements for who should be um, members of the, what would be the commission. And, um, and so I'll have, I'll obtain more information for her when we meet on February 26, but that's just a basic overview. So um, Pat DeAngelis, we hope would make this recommendation. Um, the governance committee would then move it forward for a vote by the, uh, for the full town council. The town council would have to vote to approve or, um, or accept Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 8G, the town manager would then dissolve the DAC and then would appoint um, a com the members of the commission pursuant to uh, the requirements of the statute. And, uh, you know, I've, it's been a, a little bit of time since I've looked at the statute, but I think the current composition of the board um, is pretty close, pretty much mirrors what the statute would want. So I, I don't know that there would be any significant changes in the composition of the board, but that's the process. The board can go up to nine people. Mm -hmm. um, so if we, if we, if the seven of us, or it will be six without Marty, if the six of us, don't satisfy all of the categories. They have three more people they can appoint without taking any of us off. Right. Um, so, um, so okay. So the twenty. That's an internal town staff meeting on the twenty sixth. Yeah, I will ask uh, Athena if she's uh, 
you know, would want the co-chairs to join us, but right now she's just set up a meeting for, um, for me, um, for the town manager and one other member of the staff um, to okay. go over the process. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for the work on that. That's good. So we're moving forward. Yay. And in the letter, just as I forget who suggested, I did say that it would be appropriate to do this in Joe Tringali's honor. Mm -hmm. um, and I because, mm, yeah. because he had wanted it for so long and because he was a member of the DAAC for a long time. And mm -hmm. um, so I did mention him in the letter. Good. Um, because yeah. he, he was the one who was brought it to my attention anyway, but he was he was pushing it when Jerry Weiss was the chair when Joe was on the committee. Yeah. Um, and Good. probably before that, which I didn't know about. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you very much, Pamela, for getting us that information and for getting the ball rolling. That's right. This is great. Mm -hmm. I yeah. hope well, they don't object because almost every other town in the state seems to have a commission. So, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that Amherst had to be different, but <laughs> I I hope Amherst will just do it. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, next item. So the next item, um, um, which really I think could have been combined with an earlier one, but it's the handicap parking near town hall. And I don't have an update um, okay. from on that as well. Yeah. All right. The one thing that Sarah and I apologize because the one thing I didn't put on the agenda or asked Pamela to put on the agenda has to do with your issues with the snow removal that you brought to us last month. And was there supposed to be some kind of a conversation with the fire department uh, about helping people or, or about having a way for people who need help to no to notify somebody in the event of a snow emergency were especially, we supposed especially uh, after work hours or on weekends mm -hmm. but were we i mean there's always a fire department num you know a 911 mm -hmm. there's always a fire department but the question is should we as a disability committee commission, whatever, should we try to develop some kind of a number? You know, like, you know to call 911, you know to call 988 for suicide prevention now, but you know to call 211 to get a vaccine phone call. I mean, there are certain numbers that people are supposed to know now, mm -hmm. but I'm sure we can't get a three digit one, but would it be, reasonable for there to be some kind of a telephone number for people who are disabled um, or for people who are disabled by age, even if not by disability, to call if they can't get out because their streets haven't been taken care of or mm. their PCA can't get in. Or, I mean, that was a very, very important uh Oops. observation and i don't know how we should take care of it anybody have any suggestions about where we can go with this i uh, didn't put it on the agenda and i apologize i wonder if there should be a number dedicated to that to be used on weekends or after work hours and maybe uh, put on the website the town website very easily accessible for people who are looking for it I think that's a really yeah. good idea. And it's not just weekends and work hours. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, what if all the town offices are closed on a Monday afternoon? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you need to get a PCA in on Monday night and your street isn't clear. So, right. I mean, it's it's the same thing. Yeah. And there is no there is no number. There is who would be in charge of that, Pamela, to, to see if we could get that. Public so department I, right. So I, I don't know, but I'm also going to suggest that we not have this conversation because I think we might be in open um, violation of the open meeting law, unless oh. you're going to bring it up under other business, not anticipate it within 48 hours, which wouldn't quite be true. No. Because, it uh, right. Right. So we should, okay. we should, we should really table the Hold discussion. Next until next month. Month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I apologize, Saren. Yes, okay, Saren. so we're we're taking no action, but it's yeah. worth it's worth thinking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. 
that come up next month and last month. Okay. Um, so, any- yeah, so there's, there are a few other things that I have received um, updated information on. So I'll oh, just continue okay. through the list if that's okay. Um, so the next thing that I had under old business was there, what, you asked for an update under, uh, for information about the accessible pedestrian signals. Mm. Um, so oh, I, yeah. I, yeah, so I did work. Um, e- email um, uh, Guilford Mooring. I, ha- um, I only did it, uh, I think maybe um, a week ago when I received the information about the agenda. I have not um, received a response for him, but it's only been, you know, a week. So I will reach out to him again um, to see if, the, if, there, if he has any updates on that. The um, next uh, agenda. Wait, Elise, I, were you uh, sorry, Pamela? Mm-hmm. Elise, did, were you going to say something? Oh no, I was kind of just mumbling because I've noticed that again, there are certain ones that are not working. It's just, it's just a, in, yeah. I yeah, okay. I have to say, last week we went for a walk on University Drive, and we walked from Route Nine up to uh, Amity Street and back down. There are a couple sets of lights there. Um, and some of them work like at each location, one of the lights was talking and acting properly. And you can tell that they did some work on them. So at each location, one of them was working, but the one on the other side of the street wasn't. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't tell where to cross to, and you couldn't find the locator tones on the ones that weren't working. And it may be that they just ran out of money. And they decided that they would do one at each place rather than none, not understanding that doing one isn't terribly helpful. Um, So it may be that they ran out of money, but I can see that they did something um, Mm -hmm. on University Drive. And I don't know if anyone found that they that some of the other ones are working. The one in the ones in town kind of work. But they're still, I have to say, they're still too quiet. There are times I have not heard the walk signal. And it goes da 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 very quietly. Correct. You can't always That's hear true it. on the university the traffic, drive. Too. Traffic noise is really loud. And as the weather gets warmer, car stereos ramp up. And you just can't hear anything. Okay. You know, so that's too part quiet. of what you need to report to, to Guilford. Mm-hmm. Is that some of them are working, they're too quiet. And some of them yeah. are the opposite side of the street. One isn't there. And it could easily be because yeah. he ran out of money. Um, yeah. So I don't know that, but I think he should know that we know, um, you know, that, that we I appreciated the one that was working, but I couldn't figure <gasps> out where to go on the other side of the street. So it wasn't exactly helpful. OK. All, All right. right I, Pamela, the next one. OK, so the next is an update on the Munson Library grant application. So uh, you guys will, will recall that um, uh, Rob Wachilla um, and Chris submitted an application for uh, more, ad- I think it was a assisted technology for the Munson Library. Um, so the town was not successful in receiving that grant. Um, wow. Rob states that the process was very competitive and he is looking for some additional feedback on why we were not successful, but he has not received um, any additional feedback yet. Okay. I recall, I think it had to do with making the entrance accessible on the side. It wasn't only technology. It had to do with mm-hmm. making uh, making the side entrance accessible so you could go out of the place where people vote right. mm-hmm. without going back through the skinny door into the very small entrance. Um, so that's too bad we didn't get that. So the next thing on the list is the accessible trail bill. So I received an email from Meg Bandera who had come to the committee and requested support. And um, she reports that she has some great news um, that the bill received a favorable report from the Joint Committee on Environment and and Natural Resources. uh, I'm just skimming through her email. Uh, it, it, it looks like the bill is now on its way to the Senate Ways and Me- Means Committee for evaluation. Um, she asked for continued support, and she has um, uh, an 
online petition petition um, that she would like folks to support. And I can email that um, to you if um, oh, that's for great. your review. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. So I and will also, email. If, if anyone's involved with any other organizations with uh, for people with disabilities, um, any other advocacy organizations or anything else, this would be uh, if you forward the whole letter. Uh, it would be great so people can know who to contact on ways and means and also sign the petition because it's, you know, it's for all, you know, people with all kinds of disabilities. So the more the merrier who sign it. Okay. I'll forward the entire, uh, her entire email to the, uh, to the committee. So th that was the last update. The next things, the remaining th um, items on your agenda are a general public comment period, but you don't have any members of the public, and then other business not anticipated within 48 hours before you adjourn. Okay, so is it time to go to Ian's request? It is. Okay, you have the floor, Ian. Thanks. Um, so I don't have it in front of me, but um, there is a resolution that will be uh, discussed at, I believe, the February 26th uh, Town Council meeting, um, a, a, a town council resolution for a ceasefire uh, in Israel and Palestine. Um, and I wanted to bring it to the DAAC because um, of the particular nature in which the, uh, what, what's happening there is is affecting people with disabilities. Um, and I'm just, uh, I have a quote here uh, from a WHO spokesperson that about the uh, Israel's targeted bombing of um, hospitals and healthcare facilities, uh, and, and that these attacks have affected uh, 98 healthcare facilities, including 27 hospitals damaged out of 36, and affected 90 ambulances, including uh, 50, which sustained damages. Um, and in addition to this, given the, the siege that um, Israel has Gaza under, uh, no medical aid is getting into Gaza, and so um, doctors and surgeons are having to uh, conduct surgery without anesthesia. Um, and I can't imagine having undergone any of my surgeries without <laughs> any uh, anesthesia. Um, and so I I just wanted to raise it as an item for the discussion here. Um, and my, my my personal goal would be that we, uh, if if the committee agrees on it, uh, send a letter of support for the uh, town council resolution. Anybody have any comments? I think it's a great idea to do that. Yeah, I would support that. Yeah, I'd also point out that. Um, the Israeli occupation of Gaza is also creating a lot of people with disabilities. Um, it's not just healthcare facilities that are under That's stress, true. but but a lot of, especially kids, it's just terrible. Yeah. yeah. He's right, yeah. And the yeah. mental health issues yeah. are probably universal. Oh, yeah. Um, the mental health, mental, um, you know, emotional disabilities and those the kind you can't recover from at all um, um cody yeah uh, <coughs> more about the mental health pieces all over the globe it's affecting families that have friends and relatives in the world <coughs> in those areas. So it's absolutely also a mental health matter. So I would definitely support and let uh, 
he and yes um, uh you know I, I would support it too on the on the grounds that that there are certainly people that this is creating a lot of people with disabilities that this is yes. creating incredible mental health uh uh trauma for everyone um so I think we just have to be careful that we frame it in, in uh, w that we frame it regarding disability because we don't have any charge other than disability. Um, so everything that we deal with has to have to do with that. So um, uh, Ian, are you, would you like to draft something? Pamela, can it come from a member of a committee? Can it? Does it have to come from me? How do, what's the protocol here? So, um, so no. So Ian could draft a letter on behalf of the committee. Uh, you've uh, all expressed uh, support of the letter. Um, it, um, you could take a formal vote if you wanted to, but you've all it, um, expressed support, and so it would be perfectly appropriate for him, for him to draft the letter on behalf of the committee and and submit it to town council. How do you feel about it, Ian? I'm more, I'm more than happy to uh, okay. write that letter. Uh, cool. and, and I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, or who should I send it to first before submitting it? I guess I'd like to see it. Um, okay. I mean, yeah. Uh, so I, I, yeah, the the 26th is a week and a half. A week, uh, yeah, almost two weeks from yesterday. Two weeks from yesterday. Okay. So yeah, if you can get it to me, as long as you frame it all in terms of people with disabilities, and if you can do some research, I don't, you know, um, you have a little bit, I guess, but if you can do a little more that gets you some more data, um, and it doesn't have to, I mean, it's gonna be easy to find, I would think. Um, that would be, I think, helpful, and I think for this committee to weigh in, we should take a vote. So uh, somebody mm -hmm. want to make a motion? I can make a motion that we are going to support the um, ceasefire uh, and then um, our support for people with disabilities and newly becoming disabled. And Ian is going to write the letter, the draft of the letter and send to Myra. I'll second. Okay, Pamela, do you, I'll give you a minute. Do you have something you can read to us as a motion? Still writing. Yep. It would be helpful if I unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> And I thought all that time you were thinking and writing. <laughs> no. Okay. okay. So I have a, a motion from Saren uh, to uh, have the DAC write a letter of support um, in favor of the resolution for ceasefire, fire, which uh, indicates um, support for people with disabilities um, and provides some additional data. That letter is to be written by Ian, and the second was from Elise. Okay, I guess support for people with disabilities. Yeah, I mean, the ceasefire would, would, yeah, I, can we find a word that's stronger than support? Okay, yeah. so, yeah. Um, you know, that it, that it's, you know, that it. So it's a motion to support the resolution because it's a, the letter is okay. in support of the resolution. Got it, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So we have a second. So let's I take about all, all in favor of Ian's motion, uh, of Saren's motion. Um, please say yes. 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 All opposed <laughs> and all not voting. So I guess it's all of us, six of us. Um, and nobody said no and nobody didn't vote. 
Uh, correct. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you very much, Ian, for bringing it, actually. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's like Amherst having a foreign policy again. It's like the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> we always used to have a foreign policy when there was a town meeting. And now it's getting back to the good old days of having a foreign policy. Okay. Um, I guess that might be it. Yes, that concludes your business yeah. for today. Wow. Good. Okay. Yeah. So with record time, we went through all of that. <laughs> I will contact Jeff Dugan. Ian will write a letter. Um, Pamela will try gonna... once more to hear from Rob. Or you're not waiting. You're not going to try again. No, I, I will. I will um, reach out to Rob and to Dave Zomek. I will also reach out to um, Guilford, and um, so you might ask uh, Jeff Dugan when you in the letter if he is able to provide you with copies, or I can reach out to the MAAB yeah. and seek copies of the variance requests. What would be the yeah. best way to do it? To ask Jeff to get them. Or I think it would be good if the MAAB actually knew that we had never been provided with the application and mm -hmm. that we had that we need it. Uh, so that would be really good if you would be willing to write mm -hmm. to them on behalf of us just to let them know. Because if you... Jeff Dugan doesn't need to know that we don't that we never got any um, mm -hmm. any we were never consulted about this as we should have been by their own regulations, but they need to know it. Right. So yeah, so I I can write a letter to the MAAB and seek a copy um, of the application and their um, approval of the of the variance request. Do you need a motion from us to tell you to do that if you don't hear from them in a certain amount of time as a cover? Um, do you need us to tell you to do that by a motion? Um, it would probably be helpful. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Um, okay, do I? can I get a motion um, that speaks to the topic of contacting the MAAB for copy of the variance and the decision about town hall steps. Um, if we don't get one by, if we don't receive it from the town by, I don't know, February 20th, gives them another week. What do you think? What's a reasonable date, people? So you're thinking of sending that request to the town first? No, I I need, the... I don't want Pamela to contact the MAAB without being told to do it by us, because I think it puts her in a bad situation. Right, right. So uh, what you were suggesting is we communicate this request with the town once again? And if we don't hear from them, we are going to request from MAAB. Yeah, I guess what I was suggesting is that if we had a motion that said that we will, um, that if we don't receive the application and the decision from the town by February 20th, we ask Pamela to contact the MAAB to get that yes. information. Yeah, oh, that's reasonable. That's very good. Yeah, yeah. Somebody want to make fair. that motion? Yeah, I can make that motion. Okay. That we um, request the town to send us a copy of the uh, the decision MAAB took regarding the steps of the town hall. If we don't get this any get this by the twentieth of February, then we are going to request that to come from the AAAB directly. Like okay, second from Cody. Any discussion of this, Jim? What do you, you are, you're you're an administrator type. What do you think? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
he muted? You could be he might muted. be frozen. No, he's not muted, but he might be frozen. Oh. Yeah. Jim, can you hear us? He's frozen. Yeah. Jim, There's can no you go for... out and come back in? We'll wait. Oh, hello. He was about Girl. to say something. He's saying something, but we don't hear. Right. Yeah. And he doesn't know that we don't hear. Oh. Well, he should be able to hear us. Jim, can you can you hear us? Yes, Take I can. your head. Okay, there you are. He can hear us. Okay. So. Oh, you're back. Okay. Okay. We think you were frozen. Okay, so do you have an opinion about this um, motion? No, I'm in favor. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. He's in favor. He's in favor. Okay, I didn't hear what he said. Okay. Uh, a quick question. This is Ian. Do we need to specifically say in the motion that we're asking Pamela to send it? Yes. I uh, sort of, I, I thought that that's what Saren said. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We need to, we need to empower Pamela to do it. Um, because the third, the, her third request yeah. needs to be, um, you know, three strikes and you're out. Okay. So I need a vote. I have a second from Cody. Have a um, okay. So we need a vote. All in favor of the motion to ask Pamela to contact the AAB MAAB for that information. If we can't get it from the town by February twentieth, please say yes. 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 All opposed. All not voting. <laughs> Okay, so it's six to nothing in favor. All right, now we can adjourn. So I need an, oh, the next Sorry. meeting would be, wait, would be four, March. 10, March 12. March 12, mm -hmm. at same time, same place. Okay. And, and can we Myra, add that thing, Myra, in the agenda, the snow removal? Mm -hmm. Before we. Oh yeah. Back? Yes, please. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I I didn't mean not to include that. When I got the minutes, I said, "Oh my God, I should have put that in." Okay. All right. All right. Motion. I need a motion for adjourned. Sorry, Myra. Myra can I make a, oh. a quick announcement oh. that I should have made during announcement period, but I forgot until now. Sure. Um, so I do a lot of organizing around student debt cancellation, um, and there's an event coming up at the end of the month uh, about de debt and disability. It's a community assessment call. Uh, just a, a quick description of it. Uh, join the Debt Collective's Disabled Debtors cohort to discuss the ways debt and disability shape our lives. We'll share recent experiences with total and permanent disability student loan discharge talk about the challenges of navigating healthcare and housing while disabled and discuss how we can fight back together. Um, so I will send that uh, link to Pamela to share. And that's on uh, February, February 27th uh, from 7 to 8 p.m. on Zoom. Okay, thank you right. very much. Thanks for your activism. Yes. All right, motion to adjourn. Okay, thank you. Well, we need one. I, ne I move. <laughs> Okay. Oh, a second. Okay, Elise moved and Ian second. All in favor of adjourning? Yes. Aye. Okay, all opposed to adjourning? Uh, Wait, Cody, are you opposed to adjourning? Or no. you're, in favor? you're in favor? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just a little late. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So next meeting, February yeah. 12, uh, March 12th. Okay. When it will be okay. almost spring. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. That was a good meeting. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. Pamela. Oh, you're Thank welcome. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good month.